Those DVD reviews made it back to Rogue Bear Farms for his second visit, and today I'm accompanied by one of the farm managers named Raphael. Um, yeah, I uh, just make sure everything is going the way it's supposed to, and if not, we fix it, even if it's the duct tape, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, and we get people to come in when we need them to either harvest or plant or make sure the weeds are under control and make sure the water, the, the plants are being watered and fed. That's pretty much it. It's not that, it's not a rocket surgery, so. What would you say that you enjoy most about working at Rogue Bear Farms? Working with great bosses like Jeremiah <laughs> and Raph. <laughs> no, um, the, I don't know, just Oregon, the entire state. Oregon's pretty rad. The mountains, like the view right now, oh, yeah. this is what I, my job or office, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You get to say that. Oh, this is my office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, growing hemp is rad. Better than I mean, you said jobs. You've yeah. only been working here since April. So, what would you say is like one of the biggest challenges that you've come across since you started working here? Uh, just getting to know the like how to do it properly. You know, like all the things that go into growing hemp. Oh yeah. Like it's all like new to me, so I have no idea how to do any of it. So I'm oh, yeah. learning that for sure. Is probably been. What do you guys do to keep like the crop safe from like bugs and animals and diseases? Oh, there, well, we had a we had some some like little plants that uh, that were getting eaten with like these little little white bugs or something. I don't know what they were called. Like aphids. Say 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 phylum, say phylum. Say phylum. The other raft was talking about it, but uh, we like fed them this other stuff to. You know, pretty much just making go away so it doesn't taste good or something. Oh, okay. And I think that worked a bit. No, but that's the only thing you know, that we've been doing so far. Cool. But How like with you... animals and stuff, you really, I don't know, it's really hard to cat. There, there was like a rabbit around here and like some moles, but it's really hard to like catch them and like. Mm, that's true. Okay. Especially now when it's when the plants are so big, you can't see them. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like way more crop than I was expecting to see. For whatever reason, I thought it was gonna look a lot smaller, but I think that was just because it was so bare the last time I was here that it is just kind of all an illusion in my head. <laughs> this yeah, is, this is awesome. It's like a forest out here. Like I could get lost. <laughs> Some of them you can hardly walk through the. Are there strict watering requirements for the plants? And do you know like the whole watering process? Well, we water once a day at, or at night at nine every day. Or I think it's every day. Every day at nine p.m. Yeah. yeah. And then we feed like on Monday, or Thursday in the morning. Like a when we planted the first time. Like, uh, hand planted half of them, and some of them were like too far away from the drip, mm. so they like didn't make it, and we had to replant. So, there's a, like this whole section, like, we had to replant, and just that's why it's a little small now. <laughs> personally drove you to enter the cannabis industry as a farmer. I kind of wanted to just touch on this a little bit since I didn't really get a chance to ask you more questions about yourself the last time I was here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I really believe in, um, in hemp and, and CBD. Um, we, I, I, I really believe in the medicinal side of it, and, and that's what we go for um, with, with the flour and the oil that we make. But even further than that, I, I hope one day that we can be really big or at least be a partner farm with, I'm really trying to get the plastics. I, I like really hate plastic and I think 
singing that um, I mean, Henry Ford was making plastic out of hemp in the, in the 1920s and 30s and making cars out of it. And yeah. if, if we all, the whole nation, went that way, we wouldn't have plastic in our ocean right now and all over the planet. And so uh, that's one of my biggest drives to it because I've been looking at, you, you can make it out of corn, but hemp is a little bit better. Cellulose and, and hemp is a little bit better. And that's actually one of my biggest drives is to, to do that, but just the scale we're at now and how we're working and, um, and we just went the medicinal route and I just I use it and I believe in it and I, I love growing things and um, I mean it's, it's the amount of water it uses you know compared to cotton for example or you know, just so many different reasons it's just a great plant to, to grow it's just a great choice yeah for sure and I love your approach on that that's one of my biggest hopes is that you know with hemp being so universal and that it does everything plastic does but it's actually biodegradable I'm really hoping that um, we're able to use that to eliminate plastic completely so I love that you are all for that as well yeah <laughs> 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 um, are you willing to share some of your backstory of how Rogue Bear Farms kind of all started I, I'm all, I, I've been growing cannabis for quite a long time um, for, for personal use and then I used to kind of known as the guy that gave it out for free because I just would never charge for it because I just, I don't know, it's a plant and some people just don't have the green thumb or know how to grow things. And so I would always just grow and just ask people for, you know, a little money for, you know, just, just for soil and just amendments and stuff like that. And I would do it. Um, and then I'm also um, a real estate investor. And so I buy, buy and sell real estate and I'm a carpenter and I just fix up houses and stuff. And um, I just kind of, decided to switch from a residential approach to purchasing a farm and, and kind of like do what I really like, you know, together, kind of growing cannabis and, and carpentry, and, you know, because I do, do a lot of stuff around the farm and kind of put those together and just do it on a larger scale and, and I encompass real estate into that as well. Uh -huh. So I do have a partner who's, who, that I own the farm with. He's been my best friend since we were about eight years old. Um, and, uh, and I, I, we went in together and, and purchased that farm, and really, initially, we were, we were really wanted to do the hemp, but it was just so hard to, to get, and this is like, we're talking six, six seven years ago, to, to get, you know, <laughs> supplies and, and, and speed and, and all that kind of stuff. So what the people did, they were more in the know-how, and we just did it for whatever. So we did start with cannabis, and then we moved into hemp, um, and just, we really enjoyed it really always wanted to grow the hemp just like I said we couldn't and so when we were able to we both have children we we're able to bring our children at that point to the farm and teach them mm -hmm. and, and walk them around and yeah the, res the restrictions are, are so much nicer to grow hemp compared to the uh, cannabis plant oh so yeah it was just so many reasons and then the stigma of you know selling THC and, and mm -hmm. cannabis plants and when you sell it you really don't know who's going to and end result is going to get their hands on it young child or or someone you know that or, or someone that you know doesn't use cannabis responsibly so just the whole feeling of that is, i don't know it just seems like people were thieving, thievery and all that kind of stuff was more involved in cannabis and hemp just had a lighter nicer feeling to it and, and so we just 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 were always about it and then now we're you know we've been doing it now for a while so happy happy to be doing it that's awesome. I, I really appreciate how family oriented you are and how thorough you are with everything. Um, yeah, yeah, we both are. Both of us. Could you provide a brief summary of the growing process from seed to table? Well, we buy our seeds from um, the Oregon CBD guys, mm -hmm. um, Seth and, um, and Eric there. So they're just really good guys and been doing it with them for a while. And um, trust them, and they've come out with new genetics, so we got some of that as well. And um, just the, the the percentage that they, you know, that that goes in and germinates is is, uh, is really good through them, you know. So so yeah, we use them, and then uh, we germinate all our seeds, and then we use a um, a planter, and and we go out to the planter, and we do we do some by hand to try and speed it up. So, but we use a, a planter as well. And then we'll plant those, um, and then um, it's, we usually try and get in the first week of June, and then all summer it's just hand weeding and feeding and watering.
monitoring and just kind of watching them and taking care of them, um, kind of babysitting them, I usually tell the guys. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then right around now to about October 1st is when we start looking to harvest. Um, and then we'll take us about, about three weeks to a month to harvest our whole crop. Cool. Um, and what steps do you take to ensure that you're growing the best quality crops that you can? We, well, genetics is definitely number one. Um, and then number two is going to be our soil and our water and, and what we feed and that kind of thing. So we, we, I, I'm a huge believer of cover crops and almost everyone should be using them just to keep the ground fertile. And so we always plant a cover crop and that takes care of itself over the winter. And then we, we do not sell that or anything. We just get right back into the field, keep it in the field. And I even do like a hemp compost as well that I, that I put in that we do right at the farm. So that all goes back in and that really gets that soil rich. Our water, we're just blessed with good water, which a lot of people are, but we are not on the uh, Medford Irrigation District. We have our own well. So it's, it's actually really, really, really nice, precious water. Um, and those things, and then, and then, yeah, just like I said, a good, good babysitter for the whole summer to just, just watch after them and, and take care of them. And, um, and finally, the, the slow drive that we try to do, the slower the better. Mm -hmm. A lot of big, big farms will just drive really quick, and that's really the last stage is just taking care and taking time and, and drying your, your flower. Oh, that's awesome. So you said that you use, uh, you, you reuse the hemp for uh, the soil? Is that what I heard? Yep, yep, yeah, we use some of it, we shred some of it, and then we um, we actually do like a compost with it and then put that back in. Okay, cool. So that's that's what you use with, uh, that's um, the parts of the plant that you don't use for um, your CBD extract and for your products, that's what, uh, that's what you use, you just put it back exactly. into the soil, gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of people are selling that and making pretty good money on that too, but it works. I mean, if you think of it like a pine forest or something, you know, it drops all these pine leaves down the ground all around it, and that's all you see, you know. And then the baby pine trees grow in that same, in that same soil that's made from the, the mothers, like you know, pine needles, like, and it turns into food for them, you know. So that's I just it was a, it's just a natural, I think, choice to put it back in there and, and use that as a, as a some type of food. Yeah, I like that. It's like recycling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there alternatives of using plastic on the crop rows? Um, we, yeah, we don't use any plastic. Okay. Um, we just, we just, uh, the, I mean, the only alternative right now is, um, is hand weeding, really. Um, they do have supposedly uh, some biodegradable plastics, but I, I just, I don't know, I just, I just, eh, I'm just, I'm just better without it. I, I think you can check your water lines better. Um, and yeah, we just have to do it all um, by hand. You can, like if you can purchase straw or hay or some type of cheap stuff like, you know, you can drive over the beds and, uh, and, and throw some of that on top and that'll keep the weeds down. But the cover crop really does its job in there. That's, that's one of the other reasons we really do that. It, it kind of chokes out all those weeds and then right, we wait till the last second because as soon as you cut that, that's when those cover crops start, uh, that's when those weeds start to grow once you cut that cover crop. So we try and leave that as long as we can and then boom, we make our beds and we plant and then, and then just, you know, get the plants going. Awesome. But there isn't really any other, yeah, there isn't really anything else. Right. That's why so many people are using plastic, you know, but right. I, I don't, I don't see the amount of cost it, it, it takes to, to put the plastic down and take it up. And then you still have weeds. Weeds grow over the top of it and up your plant. So it's people think it's a maintenance free thing. Some first timers here, and it's not. It's it's. So we just we just I just pay people to, to help out with labor, and it, it helps. It's good. That's awesome, and it gives people jobs. Yeah. So that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather it. do that than buy plastic. Right. <laughs> <day of> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what do you use to keep crops uh, safe from bugs, disease, and animals? Um, we don't use anything. We use good genetics. We, ju we just, uh, we just use good genetics and that's really the truth. They're so strong and all those terpenes that, that everybody talks about all the time, yep. they, they, they talk about how good they are for us, but they're, you know, they're good for that plant. That's what, that's why they're such good plants is because they have such strong terpenes and, and those smells are different for, for bugs and, and they, we like that smell, but a lot of bugs don't like that smell. Right. And the, yeah, and, and so yeah, it, I mean, that's, that's all we do. And if we see a problem, you know, our field 
so big, we just we'll cut it out, and and I just I just mulch that piece, and it goes in the mulch pile, and then you know it's just there's, we just take them off and throw them away if we ever have a problem. That's awesome. For farms that are neighboring yours, does the scent of the hemp affect their crops? Like for example, like grapes going growing in a vineyard. Not not that anyone's noticed yet. There might be something you'll see more that we might it might it might. I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but they might turn into like exactly like you just said a vineyard it might turn into like this region of hemp you know smokes or tastes like this Mm -hmm. and and this region up north tastes and smokes like that you know but i don't think individual farms will affect individual farms the only thing is those males everybody watch out for your males please (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah Raphael gave us a little rundown on how you guys um search for all the male plants and um you guys actually get help from the neighbors next door from their hemp farm and they'll come through and help find the, all the males too which is pretty cool yeah we just all yeah we all neighbor everyone kind of does it kind of together you know but it's yeah. just um and double check and double eyes and yeah we try and do it two to three times um during that season just so we can get them all out what are some complications you've come across on the farm and how did you fix them um, let me see, I guess, I mean, it's, it's funny to say, but it, it, it's really harvest, um, mm. is, is, is such a bottleneck in such a difficult time and, uh, finding good workers that know how to work and want to work and care because I, you know, I have like a, a little sign at the farm that's like, you know, flowers are delicate and, and don't step on that. I have these signs all over. Like, don't, I like, I'm like in love with these flowers, you know, and I'm like, they're very delicate and don't step on them and you can't hurt them. And so, um, yeah, just, just taking care of those flowers and keeping them really good during harvest. And, um, it's kind of a thing. I mean, a lot of the other stuff for, for me, I don't know for everyone, but it's just, it's, just, it's not, I can't say easy, but it's enjoyable and I like it. And, you know, maybe that makes it feel easy to me, but oh, harvest is always is always tough, you know. But um, but we get through it. We get through it. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and I guess the best the, the answer, the other part of the answer, yeah, how do we get through that is I did build a lot of systems in in our in our place that you might have seen going in, but new new systems of ways of hanging and drying and quicker ways and um, you know better ways of drying. So that that'll help us as well. So. In your perspective, what makes Rogue Bear Farms unique compared to other farms? Huh. Um, I don't know. I, we, I mean, I, I, I know a bunch of the farmers, and I think we all care, but I, I think that we feel that we just you know, really, really care about, about what we're doing. We're really, none of us are in it, like, solely for the money. I mean, to do this, you have to, you really have to make a profit in order to, you know, put diesel on the tractor and, and, you know, get a nicer building and do a better job. Um, but that's, that's all we try to do. Yeah. Is just do it. Just our love for that plan and, and try not, you know, not focusing on money. We're really just focusing on this plan and getting it out to all these people. You know, I, I think I told you this when I was before, but I, I used to, I used to, I've been growing marijuana in Canada for a long time and I never charged anyone I would just always give it out you know? and I was like just give me like 10 bucks for you know some soil next year or something and that's I just never I just always felt like the cannabis plant is is, is it's just it's like a pine tree it's on the earth and it's you know for us to use and and it's not a money thing it's just I don't see that and I'll, I think a lot of people do so hopefully that's what's one of our biggest differences I love that answer, and I totally agree. It's a plant, it's earth, and it, should, it shouldn't it should be, like, used for profit, especially because it yeah. comes with so many um, aspects in which it can change the world. You know, hemp is like a universal crop. You can do so, pretty much anything with it, including medicinal use to help people heal, build people homes, you know make people clothes yeah. there's so many things you can do with it i'm like actually surprised that isn't like happening yet like i haven't seen like an impact of all these things I know. yet it really I surprises know. Me. I know. they're coming but it's a lot of these other industries i think are trying to you know protect their 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 products as well you know but oh, yeah. yeah i think like you said a, a lot of these farms that maybe you know do just go for profit that's all they're looking at then I think their flower's not that good because they all they care about is that and not, they're looking at the, their bank all the time. They're not looking in the field and checking to make sure their flowers look nice and are taken care of and, and um, 
I don't know, that's, and that's why I try and do everything by hand, too. Like, I, I have this connection, I feel like, with these plants that, you know, I don't want to just run over them with a huge combine and shred them. I don't think it's cool. <laughs> but, I don't know. I love anyway. it. You're like, you're like the yeah. medicine man. <laughs> I try, I try. I don't know. <laughs> What's next in the future of Rogue Bear Farms? What is next for us? Um, we will see. We have a lot of, lot of things going on. Um, Oddly enough, we have a, uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> we have a, a large connection in South America um, for a lot of different countries uh, in South America. So um, we might be the first in Colombia. Um, we're, we're already getting a, a lot of products sent down there, so it might be the, one of the first uh, companies are there. We're actually in Brazil, um, and these are all partners of ours, yeah, in Venezuela. I don't know, just a bunch of different countries down there. We, we connected with a lot of... Um, politicians and stuff they wanted to just start this and get this in their country so we're going through it all the correct way and through licensing and and government and agencies and so it, it's been a lot but um yeah we're, we're we're looking to go there um and where tincture line is growing we're, we're actually going to be we've been doing white label uh, i don't know if a lot of people know this but a white label tincture line and our oil is phenomenal mm-hmm. we work with some really good guys that do extraction and so we've been doing white label um tinctures for a while and we do quite a lot of those every month but we're finally decided we're going to put our label on ours and we're going to we're going to get it up on our site and and we're going to have we're going to actually be the retail market we just i don't know never really wanted to be in but we're going to we're going to make our bottle available to people you know at a good price and and um so yeah we're really really excited about that so everything is um in in motion for that and we'll be given a pamphlet with it that talks about you know why we are different and how we take care of our flower and how the whole process is done so people know with full labs on everything and you know they're just the right way of doing it did you have any right. additional comments that you would like to provide for the um documentary i don't know we're just we're happy to be doing what we're doing and thankful and and um very very thankful to where we are and, and that we're able to do this i guess that's it just really thankful